A component which has no other components depending on it can be changed without causing side effects to other features of the software system. In a design like this, can we decouple components A and B such that both can be changed independently? Let's look at a concrete example. We are back in a project we already used in a couple of other videos to discuss design topics. It is the test failure analyzer which analyzes test failures from our CI CD pipeline and creates defects out of those for our defect database. Additionally, it also notifies its users about success and failure of the analyzers via email. In a simple implementation, we could just directly call APIs on the mail notification interactor from the component doing the actual failure analysis, the build failure analyzer. Such an implementation would result in a design like this, which creates a quite tight coupling between both features, analyzing failures and sending status emails, which are realized in two separate components. And even though this coupling exists due to requirements, it makes further design changes harder. For example, imagine we want to change the email component to not send emails immediately when a problem was detected, but only a summary email in the very end. Such a change would not only affect the email component, but the build analysis component as well. So how can we remove the coupling or at least reduce it? The most likely answer many developers would probably give would be, let's have an interface. So we create an interface only exposing the minimal APIs and semantical information from the email component needed by the build failure analyzer. This obviously removes the class-to-class -class dependency, as the analyzer now no longer depends on the concrete mail notification interactor, which creates some level of abstraction. The resulting design would look like this. We could argue that the coupling between both components got less tight, but effectively the coupling still exists. The probably obvious next step would be to move the newly created interface out of the email component to some shared location. But from my perspective, this is often a fake solution. Yes, from compiler perspective and in the design diagram, both components look completely decoupled now. But obviously the interface is still there, which still creates some indirect coupling between both components. As today's programming languages cannot express all aspects like preconditions, postconditions or non-functional aspects like threading at the interface level, we still have a coupling between both concrete implementations, even so there is an interface in between. The design has another drawback as well. We have moved a rather feature-specific interface, iNotification Interactor, to some central place, which makes the concept of sending notifications more global in the code base than it maybe should be. Of course, we could address this drawback by finding some more abstract interface, which not only avoids specific semantic interfaces at central places, but ideally also conceptually decouples both components even further. With an interface like this, the contract between both components is now much more abstract, not only on a syntactical level, but also on the semantical and conceptual level. And even though the build failure analyzer effectively still calls APIs on the email component at runtime, this level of abstraction causes that both components are pretty much decoupled on conceptual level. Why? Because during development of the analyzers component, we would not think specifically about sending emails, but would rather think about reporting some status in general, and vice versa. During the development of the email component, we would not specifically think about analysis issues, but would rather think about some general status information which should be published via email. This will result in code which makes less assumptions about the other side and is so less dependent on a particular implementation. But of course, such a rather high level of abstraction also has some drawbacks as well. For example, we lost the possibility to send context-specific emails. So what could we do? What if we turn the design around completely and let the build failure analyzer raising events whenever something happens, other parts of the system should be notified about? We could provide specific or more general events from the build failure analyzer and use dedicated event arcs to provide additional information with those events which would lead to a design like this. But actually this is the same design with the same issues we already discussed, just the other way around. And abstracting this design further with interfaces and so on will actually create the same drawbacks, just the other way around. But let's stick to the idea of events and see how we could develop this further. On a conceptual level, we see that the analyzers component detects certain events. For example, there's a problem analyzing a particular build failure. And this event should be published in our software system so that other components, like the email component, can react on those events and do the needful. 
To fully decouple publishers and subscribers of such events, we need a mediator, which leads us to the publish-subscribe pattern. In this design pattern, one or more publishers of a particular event would publish this event, or actually a message representing this event, to a mediator also called event bus or event broker. This mediator would then forward this message to all registered subscribers. In such a design, messages are usually immutable and should only carry serializable data structures. There are a lot of low-end and high-end implementations of such event buses out there, so you probably want to do some research which implementation matches your needs before choosing a particular one. A very simple implementation could look like this. A link to this code you can find in the description below the video. In our example, the build failure analyzer would publish the dedicated events to the event bus and the mail notification interactor would subscribe to those events and would react accordingly. As the events in our example are not reflecting technical details, but rather describe situations detected in our domain, which is analyzing failures in our CI-CD pipeline, we would call those domain events. Such domain events and their data structures would not be designed from perspective of a particular publisher or subscriber, but would be designed based on true events happening in the domain and domain entities. Therefore, those domain events belong to the domain model. And here we go. Using publish subscribe pattern and domain events, we could completely decouple feature A and feature B. Syntactically, conceptually, and even at runtime as designs based on messaging would allow the subscriber to live in a different thread, a different process, or even on a different machine. If you now wonder whether your design would benefit from publish subscribe pattern and domain events, then start your analysis with this video.